Hey guys, what's up? This is Diego here at Cinemageddon Reviews. Yeah, we've reached the bottom of the barrel here, folks. Uh, back again, continuing my series of Transformers reviews leading up to Rise of the Beasts. Today we're talking about Transformers Age of Extinction. I watched this movie twice. As in more than one time. I was debating for a really long time about whether to make this a best worst movie review or just a straight up rant. Because there are things in this movie that actually play things for humor that really shouldn't be played for humor at all. And it's really kind of disturbing. So let's get started, I guess. Um, I guess I should warn you beforehand that this is going to contain spoilers, but don't, don't watch this movie. Please just watch this review and try to get an idea of where the story goes from beginning to end from here. Don't waste your time, please. And don't waste your brain cells either. I feel like I've already done that enough times over the course of this series. So the movie before this one was Dark of the Moon, and there were things in it uh, in the story that I noticed were attempts at closing out a trilogy. For example, they gave Sam Witwicky a legitimate reason not to come back and join the Autobots for another movie. They also gave Optimus Prime sort of an arc where it closes out his part of the story with him confronting Sentinel Prime and sort of coming into his own as the leader of the Autobots. They also completely destroyed the planet Cybertron and killed off Megatron for what seemed like the last time. And despite the film's abrupt ending, it actually felt like an attempt at closing out a trilogy. But Age of Extinction proves that with Michael Bay's Transformers, there was never any real interest in giving anything to the fans, except for another reason to come back and spend more money on this IP. And that sounds very mean-spirited, but honestly, it's true. This movie proves that they legitimately do not give a shit about the fans, just what's in our wallets. Because they gave us a movie this time that was not only everything Revenge of the Fallen got wrong, but also fills up the plot with every conceivable cliche you could possibly throw into a sci-fi action movie. Our main protagonist is a down-on-his-luck father butting heads with his daughter's boyfriend? Check. The bad guys taking advantage of government officials and making them do their dirty work? Check. Advanced alien technology being reverse engineered for military application that suddenly goes crazy and tries to kill everybody? Check, check, and check. I believe it was Dr. Seuss who once said, with my hands should I clap? No, 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 you're crap, crap, crap. One of the things people pointed out after my Dark of the Moon review regarding the controversy with Megan Fox that I didn't talk about was that Megan Fox apparently accused Michael Bay of being similar to Adolf Hitler with the way he assumes creative control of his movies. And that sounded a bit extreme, of course, but after watching this movie, I can kind of see where she's coming from. Because probably my biggest issue with this movie is that Michael Bay just did whatever he wanted, and nobody had the balls to say no to him, because not only is he the creative mind behind these movies, he's also the reason they make tons of money. Like, for example, the second act of this movie is basically a ripoff of Star Wars when Obi-Wan, Luke, and Han Solo invade the Death Star looking for Princess Leia. It's not just the character tropes that make the plot unbearable, it's also the fact that it's so unoriginal, even for a movie that's supposed to be the fourth entry in the franchise. And every subplot that Michael Bay shoehorned into this movie makes no sense because of all the other subplots that are already inside that contradict it. Like, for example, Optimus Prime knows about the creators and how the race of Transformers were created on Earth, but he didn't know about how, in Revenge of the Fallen, the Seven Primes were already here during the Stone Age. Literally in the first scene of the first Transformers movie, Optimus Prime says, Before time began, there was the Cube. We know not where it comes from, only that it holds the power to create worlds and fill them with life. That is how our race was born. So it's, it's kind of amazing how selective his memory is. Another thing that doesn't make sense in this movie is that basically the whole plot revolves around the Autobots being hunted down because the Transformers are seen as a danger to Earth, but yet the government spends all this time and money reverse engineering Transformer technology to build their own Transformers. And part of the way they're creating those new Transformers is by using their memories to implement the transforming abilities into the tech. Which to me sounds like a very safe and profitable idea, considering that one of the Transformers that they're taking those memories from is Megatron. Stupid or something. Just like Revenge of the Fallen, this type of plotline makes no sense for this movie because literally the whole point of the last one was that we need the Autobots to defend Earth, but now we just conveniently forgot about it because we need a plot for this movie. One thing they did try to improve over the previous three Transformers movies was characterizing the Autobots a little bit more. I think it's cool that they added John Goodman and Ken Watanabe voicing two of the new Autobots. The issue I have with it is those characters are all the exact same type of character, which is already pretty annoying, so you have three of the exact same type of insufferable character constantly arguing with each other in every scene. Human being. Bunch of backstabbing weasels. I'll find your inner compass. 
Loyalty is but a flower in the winds of fear and temptation. What the hell are you saying? It's a haiku. Cut the crap before I drop a grenade down your throat. Try it. You'll be dead. Oh, please pull it. And anytime somebody comes up with some kind of plan, they always say something like, oh, that's not going to work. Oh, it's a stupid plan. Oh, you're going to get us all killed. And it makes the humor comes off as forced and repetitive. Also, while we're here, on the issue of racism, Ken Watanabe plays a samurai transformer who speaks in haikus and transforms into a Japanese supercar, and apparently all Chinese people turn into martial arts experts when they're threatened with physical violence. One thing that was being advertised in the trailers that got fans excited was the introduction of the Dinobots. The trailers actually focus quite a bit on them. Yeah, guess what? They're only in the third act. Oh, I'm sorry. You thought you were going to get cool scenes with Optimus Prime riding on the back of a fire-breathing T-Rex? Nope! Instead, we'll give you Stanley Tucci screaming for three hours. Oh, this is the perfect place to hide! A big glass box! Nobody will ever find us here! That's... No! 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 Oh my god! Speaking of the human characters... Wow, I hated every single one of them. The... <laughs> I hated every single one of these characters. I hated them. I hated them. The two best performances in the movie are from Stanley Tucci and Kelsey Grammer. Mostly Kelsey Grammer because at least he didn't spend most of the movie screaming like a little girl. Mark Wahlberg's character has the worst name I've ever heard in a fictional character in a movie. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Kate Yeager? Are you serious? Okay, a, a better question that I might have for you is, if this is the name they went with, what names did they turn down? <laughs> Cade Yeager. Cade Yeager is his name. Cade Yeager. At, at least Sam Witwicky sounded semi-realistic, but what the hell kind of name is Cade Yeager? I mean, at least try to come up with something better than this, like... Like Auntie Dandruff, or, or Dick Champion. Or Fire Penguin Disco Panda. See, that's a name with a built-in reputation. Nobody would mess with that guy. Normally, I like Mark Wahlberg, but he spends the whole movie yelling and arguing with his daughter's boyfriend, and it just makes him really annoying. Speaking of his daughter and her boyfriend, those are the two worst performances in the movie. And this movie's almost three hours long, so get ready to deal with that for a long time. You better also get ready to deal with some pretty intense pedophilia, because this movie deals with that quite a bit, and not only deals with it, it also defends it. Mark Wahlberg's daughter is 17 years old, and the boyfriend is like, I don't know, like 24 or something like that, which already sounds fucking gross. Oh, but don't worry. In case you were about to call the police just now, he pulls out a laminated card explaining some bullshit called the Romeo and Juliet law. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm not accepting that. Hey, why don't you have a seat right over there? How you doing? Good, how are you? Who are you? I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC. I don't mean to get overly serious here, but I have to make the exception. This is the psychological manipulation that is attempted here with these last two Transformers movies. Studios and producers and directors think that as long as you play something for humor, then the audience will just accept it and be okay with whatever fucked up joke you have. Even if it's racist, overly sexual, or some type of fucked up way of saying that you're okay with crimes against children. But what you're doing is you're not only treating major issues like they're not a big deal, but also disrespecting your audience and treating them like idiots. I used to like Michael Bay's movies, especially the older ones like Armageddon and Bad Boys. They weren't perfect, in fact they were pretty far from it, but you could just watch them and have fun with them. And, and look, I don't have anything personal against the guy because I don't know him, so I can't speak to who he is as a person. But something has to be said about the way he treats his audience. Overall, Transformers Age of Extinction is not just the worst Transformers movie in the series, it's also just an awful movie in almost every way. There's really kind of nothing redeeming about it. I'd say the action scenes are fun, but because of the way the story's written and the characters involved in those scenes that you just don't like, even though you're apparently supposed to, it's kind of hard to enjoy that too. And with that said, my rating for Transformers Age of Extinction is 0 out of 10. <laughs> I'll say this, while I was re-watching the movie, there was a scene that I had forgot was in it that was so dumb that when it came up, I actually friggin' screamed. It's your car? Huh? What'd I tell you? There's, there's no respect there. There's no respect for the audience. And that's my review of Transformers Age of Extinction. 
<sighs> Finally, we're out of the darkness. The movies only get better from here on out, I promise. Now, what was my next review? Well, it's slightly better, I guess. Kinda, maybe. So if you've seen Age of Extinction, please let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. Do you like it or do you hate it? I definitely hate it. There, there are very few things in this world that make me mentally tired, and this movie's definitely one of them. But I'm curious to know what you thought of it. Maybe you have a different opinion than mine, and that's okay. As always, guys, be sure to like this video and subscribe. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and please support our Patreon. We really appreciate that. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Diego for Cinemageddon Reviews, and I'll see you on the Wasteland.